This is simple squamous epithelium. The slides were made for Anatomy 10A lab at Mount San Antonio College. Remember there are four main tissue types. Epithelial tissue, otherwise known as epithelia for plural, epithelium singular. Another tissue type is connective tissue. And then we also have muscle tissues and nervous tissues. The entire body can be broken down into one of these four tissue types. Let's continue with epithelia. All epithelia has to line a surface. So think of it as a, a liner, okay? It's the lining layer. These cells will be found very close together, meaning there are no gaps in between them. There will be no blood vessels in the epithelia. And how are they named? They're named by the number of layers of cells, and they're named by the shape of the cells in the tissue. If there is only one layer, then we call them simple epithelium. Remember, the basement membrane is where the epithelium ends. If there are more than one layer, such as in this case, there's one, two, three layers, then we call this stratified epithelium. When we look at all epithelium, or all epithelia for plural, notice there's always a free surface up here, or up here. Meaning, when I say a free surface, I mean this is going to be touching air, touching water, touching urine, touching blood, but it will not be touching another cell just like it. This is because, by definition, epithelium has to line a surface. And when it lines something, it has to have a free surface up on top. This, by the way, is also called the apical surface up here. And this down here would be the basal surface. In addition to naming them by how many layers of cell, we can also name them by shape of the cell. If the cell is flat, we call it squamous. I personally prefer the word squished because squished is SQ, and that reminds me of the word squamous because squamous is also SQ. If the shape of the cell is square, square is defined as the height is about the same as the width, then we call that cuboidal. And if the shape is rectangular or tall and skinny, we call them columnar. Notice that you can only tell the shape difference a view in this section. If you see the cell from top down, it's impossible to tell the shape of the cell. Okay, So that is, if you're standing up on top looking down on the surface of the cells, then it's very hard to see the shape. But crosswise, you know, looking at the side of the cell, then you can tell the shape much easier. Okay. This is a classic textbook picture of simple squamous epithelium. What you have to know is this is the name you give if we ask you, name this tissue. Okay, so if this turns out on the test, uh, and you see, you see a picture similar to this, then you got to say this is, you know, and the question asks, name this tissue. The answer we're looking for is this, simple squamous epithelium. What else can we ask? We can ask, name the cell in simple squamous epithelium? Well, in that case, the cell type or the name of the cell would be squamous cell. And how do you know it's a cell? Well, if you look closely, you see these dots. And it's not a perfectly round dot, but almost oval squished dot. These dots are nuclei okay, of the squamous epithelial cell. And uh, here you're looking at simple squamous epithelium found in the lungs. This is the air sac of the lungs. These white spaces would be air, and the lining here is the simple squamous epithelium. You will also need to know where uh, these simple squamous epithelia are found. So that is, just give one location on the test. In this corner here, it tells you where to find them. The location would be kidney glomeruli, air sacs of lungs, lining of the heart, 
lining blood vessels, and lining lymphatic vessels, and lining of ventral body cavity. Here's a picture of air sac in the lungs. And if you look closely, this is high power, so you can see clearly these dark structures. Once again, remember these dark structures are nuclei. Remember on the practicum, spelling does count, so be careful. If we only point to one, then you call that a nucleus, because that's singular. If we point to multiple, then you call that nuclei, because that would be plural. Okay, so this is a nucleus for this squamous cell right here. This, the pink stuff would be the cytoplasm of the squamous cell. So once again, if we ask you for this picture, in this picture we ask, name this tissue, then the answer would be simple squamous epithelium. If we ask in this picture, name this cell, or name this cell, or this cell, then your answer would be squamous cell. In addition, you're going to have to identify the nucleus, which is here, and here, and here. Okay, all of these would be good example of nucleus. The pink stuff around the nucleus would be cytoplasm, and this would be the airspace. Here's another picture of simple squamous epithelium. Once again, we're still in the lungs. I hope you get the pattern. Uh, it's all beginning to look similar, I hope. And once again, you just zoom in where these dots are, and these would be the nucleus or the nuclei of simple squamous epithelial cells. Okay. Once you see those nuclei, you know that the pink stuff around it would be cytoplasm, and this is the, the cells lining this air sac. A okay, cell lined this air sac would be found here, and they're very thin, there's only one layer thick, and it's uh, squish shaped, so it's squamous. Here's high magnification, and perhaps this is much easier to recognize. This dark structures, this is a nucleus. That's another nucleus, that's another nucleus. So you see there are many nuclei around. Remember, outside the nucleus would be the cytoplasm of the cell. And this is only one cell thick, so it's simple. And the shape of the cell is squished, so it's squamous. All of this is air sac. Here's another look, once again. Hopefully at this point you recognize that this is epithelium and it's only one layer of cell thick and this cell is very thin. Okay, here's one cell, here's another cell, here's another cell. Why? Because these are nuclei and so you would have to say simple squamous epithelium. Here's another view. Okay, all of this would be simple squamous epithelium. Possibly down here is another simple squamous epithelium. And believe it or not, this is another simple squamous epithelium. This is a blood vessel. And if you follow, the, the dark squished structure would be the nucleus. And this is the simple squamous epithelium lining this blood vessel. The rest of the tissue here, don't worry about. That is something we have not yet talked about. Sometimes simple squamous epithelium can present in a different perspective. Take here a blood vessel. And this is a blood vessel. Let's say if I fold up this sheet of paper, and I fold the paper like this, this is that picture of the blood vessel. Okay? But if I strip away all the outer layers of this blood vessel, and it only, I only leave behind the lining, then what you will see is this drawing. And how do I go from A to B? Well, I'm going to cut the blood vessel in, down the side here, and then I'm going to open it up, and you see the flat sheet of the side of the blood vessel. And that's picture B and picture C. Okay. So this is still simple squamous epithelium, but only seen in a different direction. In the last slide, in this slide, for example, 
the blood vessel is seen in this view. So it looks very thin. I'm sorry, not the blood vessel, but the simple squamous epithelium is seen in this view. So it looks very thin. Now you're seeing simple squamous epithelium as a whole sheet of cells. So it looks like that. Here's an image of simple squamous epithelium seen from the top surface looking down on it. As you see, each of this is a squamous cell. Okay, squamous cell. And this round structure, it doesn't look squished anymore because remember, you're looking from top on down at the cell. You're looking at the cell in this view, not in this view. Okay, this was the view where it looks really thin and squished and skinny. Now we're looking top down like so. So this would be the nucleus. The structure around the nucleus would be cytoplasm. And then this outline of the cell would be plasma membrane or cell membrane. So this is an example of simple squamous epithelium. This too is simple squamous epithelium. Okay, Taken at a different location, but still, you hopefully you recognize, this is a squamous cell. Okay, So if I ask you the cell, you would say squamous cell. And the structure you can identify. Nucleus, cytoplasm, plasma membrane, or cell membrane. Here's a little bit of a curveball. This is simple squamous epithelium lining the glomerulus in the kidney. Okay. And you're like, whoa, this is a little bit of a stretch. Yes, I know, it gets a little more difficult. But hopefully you recognize all this white space here as being the free surface I mentioned earlier. Okay, all this would be free surface. So if that's a free surface, then this is lining something. Okay, and if you focus on this little dark smudge here, uh, this is a nucleus, believe it or not. It's a squamous cell nucleus. The shape of it is squished. And if you look deeper, it's really only one layer thick. It's not multiple layers. So it's squamous and it's simple. So this whole lining is simple squamous epithelium. Here it is again inside on this surface. That's also simple squamous epithelium. Here's another look at a different kidney glomerulus. Likewise, if you look here, lining this surface, okay, now first of all, you should recognize the white area as being uh, a potential space, so that this is definitely lining this space. And lining the space, you see the squish dark structure, which you should know now, nucleus, right? This is a nucleus, that's a nucleus, that's a nucleus. And the nucleus definitely looks squished, so this is squamous cell. And if you look at how many layers, well, it's pretty much only one layer thick, lining this whole surface. So it's simple squamous epithelium. The stuff outside here, if you notice, these are round, healthy-looking nucleus, completely different than the squished nucleus. So this is not a squamous cell. This is a different cell. Here's another picture of simple squamous epithelium, but now we're in a blood vessel. And how is this blood vessel? Well, it's like this. Okay, imagine a blood vessel like this, and you're looking at it, on the cut surface, okay, we cut the surface and you're looking at the wall of the blood vessel. Obviously, this is a very big blood vessel, okay, this big. All of this from here to here is the wall of the blood vessel. This is inside the blood vessel. Now, remember, this is magnified 400 times. So, in here is blood. Okay, so if you recognize that this stuff looks different than here, then you recognize that this stuff is... is Certainly not cells. I don't really see a whole lot of nucleus. Although blood, this is blood cell, but that's a different story. Okay, we'll go there later on. But you should recognize there's an absence of possible nucleus. And when there's an absence of nucleus, then you know that this is not cell. Here is a surface lining this structure, this round structure. And whenever you see a surface lining something, think epithelium. So this is definitely epithelium around here. Your next st uh, two questions you should ask yourself once you recognize this epithelium is, number one, what's the shape of the cell? 
And the shape of the cell can be determined by this dark structure. Remember, the dark structure would be nucleus. This is a nucleus. It's not a round nucleus, it's a squished nucleus. So that gives it away that this is a squamous cell. And furthermore, you look, it's really pretty much only one layer thick. Okay, because all of this stuff here is different than that. So all of this here is only the nucleus and it's one layer thick. So you put it together, simple squamous epithelium. Here's another look at simple squamous epithelium. And if you notice, it's not this stuff, because these are round nucleus. This is also round nucleus territory. So what I'm interested in is here and here. That's simple squamous epithelium. All of this stuff here, especially the white space, should give you a hint that we're looking at epithelium. That is, it's lining a surface. This cell and this cell and this cell is lining this surface. Here, this is a nucleus for this cell. Here's another nucleus for this cell. Another nucleus for this cell. All the pink stuff would be cytoplasm. This, of course, would be the squished nucleus of the squamous cell. So you see it's only one layer thick, so it's simple squamous epithelium. This, by the way, is blood. And in this picture, the blood vessel is running diagonally. In other words, think of a blood vessel like this, okay? And we have just cut it in half. So you're looking at this edge of the blood vessel and this edge of the blood vessel. Okay, so you're looking at the two cut edge of the blood vessel. Here's the look, and if you notice, this is where your attention should be. There's the white space, meaning it's a potential lining of a structure. So this is lining the structure here. And sure enough, if you pay close attention, this is a squish nucleus. Here's another squish nucleus. Here's another squish nucleus. So indeed, simple squamous epithelium. By the way, this and this is also simple squamous squamous epithelium, but it's not quite as easy as to see. And lastly, here's some uh, structure. Okay, all of these vessels coming out of the screen towards you. So in other words, all these vessels are like this. Okay, it's coming up this way, coming that way, and coming this way. This is an arterial, this is a venule, and this is a duct. All of this is epithelium. Okay, this is epithelium, this is epithelium, this is epithelium. Now this and this are two very different epithelium. This, if you notice, the nucleus is squished, only one layer thick, so this is simple squamous epithelium. Whereas this is not squished, these nuclei are actually pretty round, so these are not squamous cell, it's something else, and we'll go talk about that in the next section.